This video will be an introduction to some of the basic properties of the Dirichlet distribution. It's named after Dirichlet, one of the great mathematicians of the 1800s. And the Dirichlet distribution is, is interesting because it's a distribution on probability distributions. So what is it? So we say that, let me use theta for a Dirichlet distributed random variable. We say that theta is distributed according to a Dirichlet we write as dir sometimes with parameter alpha if, so this means that the density function, which I'll use a lowercase p for, of this of theta is proportional to, well I'll just write what it's equal to. So it's equal to 1 over a generalized beta function of alpha times the product as i goes from 1 to m. So let's say, so let's say that, so this state is going to be a m dimensional vector. It's going to be, this is going to be a distribution over m dimensional vectors. I'll make, may as well make it n, just to keep things simple. So it's a distribution over n dimensional vectors and the density is this thing. 1 over this generalized beta times the product of theta i to the alpha i minus 1 times the indicator function that theta is in what's called the probability simplex. So I'll just write s. I'll just write s for, for the probability simplex. And this is this set s. So s here. Well, first let me tell you what alpha is. Alpha, this was the parameters for our distribution, and this is a vector, alpha 1 to alpha n, and each of these alphas is strictly positive. Just some positive real numbers. And this s here, this, fun this set s, is the set of all, uh, let's see, what should I use, x I guess? I don't know if I, do I want to use I'll say x. All vectors x in R n here, such that x i is greater or equal to zero, and the sum of the x's is one. So each of these is just. So this is just the set of PMFs on the numbers one to n. Right. This is just. These are just the conditions for. A probability mass function, it's just some numbers that are non-negative and, and they sum to 1. So this we call, this is called the probability simplex. And so the Dirichlet distribution is a distribution which has a support, the support of this distribution, that is where it's the closure, to be precise, of where it's non-zero is on the probability simplex. And oh, so I have to define this beta this beta function here, this thing. That is beta of alpha. Well, let me write 1 over. That's a little a little clearer. 1 over this generalized beta function is it uses the gamma functions. So you can think of it as sort of a generalized multinomial coefficient. Sort of an analogy to a multinomial distribution. So it's gamma of alpha 0 over the product of these gamma functions, gamma of alpha i, product of all those, where alpha, uh, alpha 0 is, where should I put alpha 0? Alpha 0 will define to just be the sum of all the alphas i from 1 to n. So that's that's this alpha 0. So that's the Dirichlet distribution. That's it. It's just this. It's defined by this density function. And it's a distribution over these n-dimensional vectors. Real value vectors. So let's look at um, a little bit of intuition for what the distribution what this distribution looks like. Let me give you a couple. So first of all, what's this probability simplex thing? 
So in three dimensions at least I can draw it. If this is the first coordinate, the theta 1 coordinate, the theta 2 and the theta 3 coordinates, then the set of all these, the triples theta 1, 2 and 3 that satisfy these conditions are just this triangle. This sort of, it's, uh, you know, you could think of the plane cutting through here, through these points, uh, you know, where this is 1 and the others are 0, this is 1, the others are 0, and so on, and it's just the subset of that plane in the non-negative orthant here. So that's a probability simplex, and let's look at a little bit of uh, and a couple examples of what a Dirichlet distribution can look like. So let me a different color here. So I'm going to take that triangle and lay it down flat. And so the Dirichlet distribution can look, for example, well, one thing it can do is it could just be it could just be uniform, it could just be constant. So we, one thing it could just be like a constant here. Another thing it can do is it could have like a hump in the middle, sort of like something sort of Gaussian looking, but it's just constrained to this set. It can also that it could have a hump sort of near one of the corners or located somewhere else in this in this little this triangle. So that's supposed to be sort of like that. And you can also, it can also do kind of interesting things like it can spike up at the corners. So if this is that same triangle again, it can also go, like for example, it could go like this, spike up at that corner, maybe spike at this corner too, and maybe not at this one. So that's supposed to be spiking up there, going up off to infinity. So you can do all kinds of interesting things with this distribution. And oftentimes we use a Dirichlet distribution to as a prior distribution on probability on B, on PMFs on a finite set like this. So it's very useful in Bayesian statistics, Bayesian inference. Now let's look at a couple statistics for this distribution. So let's look at the expected value of one of the coordinates. Let's look at the expected value of theta i, where theta is distributed, Dirichlet, and let's write out what this is. This is, well maybe I'll, maybe I'll just write it first. I'll, I'll claim, I'll make a couple statements here and then we'll, then we'll prove them. So this, the expectation of this guy is alpha i divided by, well I can just write it, so it's, it's alpha i divided by alpha 0. So alpha 0 was the sum of all the alphas. That's just the, the mean, so it's a very simple thing to remember. You can think of it as just, it's proportional to the ith, the ith parameter, because these are all non-negative numbers, and when you divide by the sum, then th in fact this is also a a probability distribution. It's a PMF. Another statistic of interest here is the mode. The mode of, well, of alpha i, which is the the maximizer, and that's alpha i minus, or mode of theta i, is alpha i minus 1 divided by the sum of all those. So if we summed over i from 1 to n, we would get alpha 0 minus n. Actually, to be more precise, let me say it this way. That's, that's a little unclear. The mode of this distribution is the vector alpha 1 minus 1 over alpha 0 minus n. Same thing with alpha 2 up to alpha n minus 1 divided by alpha 0 minus n. So in other words, when we when we take this vector, when we set theta equal to this vector, then the distribution, this density function, is maximized. 
So this is the maximizer of the distribution, the mode. And this can be proven. You can prove this using a very similar argument to the, if you look at my, the video on the maximum likelihood estimate for a finite, for a, a PMF on a finite set, then the same argument to, that was used to prove that can also be used to prove this. It's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's exactly the same argument. And let me also give you one more statistic here for the distribution. The variance of the i. Th Remember this. This is a this is a random theta is a random vector, and so this is the these are statistics for the i th component of that vector, and the variance for the i th component is let's see, I don't remember it offhand, but it is alpha i times alpha zero. I times alpha zero minus alpha i divided by alpha zero squared times alpha zero plus one. That's the variance. And let me make um, a little remark here. Something to to get some intuition for what these parameters are doing. These alphas. If you think about taking alpha i for example, or let's say 1, say i is 1. So if we took 1, alpha 1, and, okay, so well, first of all, let's, let's think about this. So first of all, let's think about if all the alphas were equal to 1. Set that every, every element of this vector is just a 1. Then the exponents here just become zeros, and so this is just a constant. So in fact, it's the uniform. It's the uniform distribution over the probability simplex. So in particular, this is that would be this case right here, right? We set them all equal to 1 and we get a uniform distribution. Now suppose we we set them all equal to 1 except then we we're going to play with alpha 1. So what happens if we make alpha 1 big? Let's say we jack up alpha 1 really big. Then if we look at the expected value of theta 1, that tells us nominally what theta 1 is going to look like. And when alpha 1 is big, this, so as alpha 1 is getting bigger and bigger, this number is going to 1 because alpha 0 is the sum of all the alphas. So when all the others are constant, this is going to 1. And so this expected value, well, it's not like that. It's going to be a situation, something more like this here. That if this was, this was 1, 2, 3... The mass is 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 aggregating at at one. On the other hand, let's say that we took we held all the others at one, and we took alpha one to be less than one. Remember, it has to be positive, but we could make it like a half or something. Then this exponent become that would be minus a half in that case. But in in particular, whenever it's between zero and one, whenever alpha one is between zero and one, this is a negative number. So we get one over so, so this is so so when alpha so we would get like one over theta to the one half or something, and that means that when theta is going to zero, or when, when, rather when theta one is going to zero, like for example, that would be sort of like this one, at least this corner of it, then the density is going to infinity, and so by setting these alphas, by setting alpha one between zero and one you can get this sort of behavior. This one we would have set, what was this? I said 2, 3. For this type of situation, you would have to set alpha 3 also between 0 and 1. So hopefully that gives you some intuition for how you can get different types of distributions using this the Dirichlet distribution.